Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our Sunday worship service. We are still continuing our online service. Today is the 4th of October. How time flies! There is only three months left in 2020. Hopefully, everyone joining today is safe and healthy. Wherever you are, or whatever time you are joining the service, it is good to have you join. If you have any questions or suggestions for our Sunday services, please contact us through our email address or our Instagram account. Our speaker today is Rev. Dr. Martin Sinaga. May the Lord Jesus be pleased with our worship and devotion. Our call to worship today is based from Acts 17 and Psalm 66. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and we will tell what God has done for us. God is the sovereign of heaven and earth, maker of this world and all within it. God has given to all mortals life and breath and every blessing. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. May the grace and peace of our God dwell in our hearts as we worship Him today. So let us start this service by singing a song to praise Him. How Great Thou Art, led by Ibu Pipit. Oh, 
joy shall fill my heart Then I shall come With humble adoration And then proclaim My God, how great thou art Then sings my soul Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, today we come together as a family, as a congregation, to seek you and to speak to you. We thank you, Father, for everything you have provided, for our health, our needs, and being with us during this difficult time. We thank you that we as a church can still gather, sing praise to you, and listen to your word. Today, we choose to humbly walk with you. We choose to live by your Holy Spirit and to follow your lead. Help us to hear your message clearly, open up our understandings to the ways of your wisdom, for we do not want to walk by pride or self-sufficiency. We want to walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Whenever we confess, we are forgiven of our sins, and Christ's blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Believing in God's word from 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Since we have this marvelous provision from God, let us humbly submit ourselves and confess our sins today before God. Let us start by singing a song, Lord I Need You, led by Jerry and Rebecca.
Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace to confess our sins. We've been selfish instead of generous. We've been proud instead of humble. We've held grudges instead of forgiving. We have proven over and over again that we cannot be good enough on our own. We pray that you will transform us. Give us heart that want to bless our friends and neighbors. Seek peace and prosperity. Help us see Jesus, who suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. We have been saved by His resurrection, and His victory is our victory. May we revere Him in our hearts, and Lord, may this transform the way we live. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Those who have confessed their sins and repented, the assurance of pardon written in Psalm 103 verse 8 to 12. The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Let us praise the Lord for his forgiveness by singing a song Lord, I lift your name on high, led by Gusti and Riorita. Dear BICF family, let us give thanks for God's goodness and provision to us by providing an offering through BICF. You can transfer your offering to BICF bank account and pray that we, as a church, can continue to do our ministry. Remember the word of God from 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Brothers and sisters, it is now time for our family prayer. Let us come to the Lord as a congregation in collective prayer. But before that, let us express our faith in God through the song, Pass Me Not, Gentle Savior, led by the Santoso family. me not a gentle Savior in my humble cry. Oh, let us not call 
Thank you for your blessings and protection over this past week. Thank you for the opportunity to come to you this morning to lift up our prayers. We lift to you our concern for the people who become sick from COVID-19, Lord. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in the time of uncertainty. We also pray for all the people who have to work each day and who are unable to work from home. We ask that you bless and protect them as they work. Keep their bodies healthy and protect them from all contracting the new coronavirus. We also pray that you would help with the vaccine development from, for the COVID-19. We ask for your mercy upon our country, Indonesia. And you know that the COVID-19 situation is getting worse each day. We pray that you guide our national leaders to lead and to make decisions with wisdom. Lord, like your word says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So, in place of our anxiety, Lord, give us your peace. And we pray that Jesus, you protect us during this pandemic. Father, we also pray for Maziar, Mahnash, and Hana as they are moving to Jakarta. We pray that you would bless them as they move and help them in the new place they are living in. Help them to find new friends, new Christian friends, and help them to adjust themselves with the new situation in Jakarta. Lord, we commit the family, their staying in Indonesia, and their future, Lord, into your hands, in Jesus' name. Lord, we are remembering our sister Ibu Eni, who is still sick. We pray that you heal her, because all the healing power is in your hands. May your power destroy any cancer cells and heal each part of her body. Show your mercy and healing power, so that she may be healed. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers and help us to be always aware of your presence as we place our trust only in you. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, 
The theme of today's sermon by Rev. Dr. Martin Sinaga is A Life of Purpose taken from 1 Peter 3, verse 8 to 1 Peter 4, verse 6. Let us prepare our heart for the Word of God. Before that, let us sing the song, Christ is Enough for Me, led by Elisa. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing, no turning back. I've been set free Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me Everything I need is in you Everything I need Christ my My soul will sing, Jesus is here, to God be the glory, Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me, everything I need is in you, everything I No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning
Dear brother and sister, before we reflect upon our Bible, let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you bless us in our life. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may understand your word in us, in our life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Bible that we are going to read is from the letter of Peter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 until chapter 4, verses 6. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and seek good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. 1 Peter 4 Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry, they think it strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Dear friend, I remember in 2007 when Barack Obama received his Nobel Laureate, he made a speech with somehow echoing the letter of Peter, as Obama said like this. I take away the compelling idea that there is serious evil in the world and hardship and pain. And we should be humble and modest in our belief that we can eliminate those things, but we should not use that as an excuse for cynicism and inaction. What Obama said is similar to what the letter of Peter warned us to deal with. There is a hardship, and even in the letter of Peter, he mentioned there is a suffering. Even Christ suffered then those suffering may also 
come to us as the beloved disciples of Christ. As Obama said, there is hardship, there is suffering, but because we inherit, it said in the letter of Peter, uh, chapter 3, verses 9, because we inherit a blessing, therefore we should be hopeful. We should not come to believe in cynicism or in action. And dear friend, there is a one journalist by the name of uh, David Brock from New York Times. David Brock made an interview to uh, Obama after listening to his speech. And David Brock asked him whether Obama read the Bible or some books of theologian. And Obama said, yes, Obama read Reinhold Niebuhr, a theologian, an American theologian, who developed the so-called Christian realism. According to uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, the purpose of a Christian living is to live faithfully as Christ has blessed her or him. Therefore, he can live faithfully but realistically. And what also the letter of Peter mentioned and warned us, addressing us in this kind of life, that we may understand that realistically in life there is hardship, there is suffering, even Christ suffered. But in those kind of reality, in this kind of realism, we may live faithfully, we may live as Christ's disciple because we inherit the blessing. We inherit God's gracious love in our life. That's the first uh, point that we should reflect, reflect upon as we in this kind of life, in this kind of struggle, we realize realistically that our context is a kind of hardship. But we should be, as Obama said, as also the Bible said, we should be hopeful we should be as Christian living faithfully hopefully in this kind of reality but then dear friend the gospel of the letter of Peter want us to go further after realizing life in such hardship but we should not succumb and give in just to that kind of problem we should be hopeful we should be full of action. There is one thing that the letter of Peter want, want us to, to be. At the verses 15, uh, the first uh, chapter 315, the Peter said us that we should defend or that we should give account for the hope that's it in you. That's, that is given to you and to me. We are asked by this word, dear friend, while we are hopeful, while we are in this kind of reality, still have hope. And the letter of Peter warned us to give accounting for the hope that it is in you, that it is in us. Of course, we can say that indeed there is hope which is so deep in our life. And what kind of hope that we have? The hope that we receive from Christ. Because in Christ, we receive God's steadfast love. It is because of Christ that we know now that God that we are having is not a blind power. God that we are believe in is not a harsh judge. But God that we know in Christ is God who loves us. There is a very beautiful verse in uh, Psalm, which is Psalm 115, uh, verses 1. He said like this. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love 
and your faithfulness. What Christ bring us, what Christ share with us, what Christ open our eyes is to God in such kind of God. God who are glory, but yet God glory because of His steadfast love, because of God faithfulness in our life. That is the most important account that we may say to this word, the reason that we have hope in this kind of reality. And yet, dear friend, not only that we know such God, such glory God who are steadfast in His love, but we also know that in Christ, in the cross of Christ, that God is also carrying what we are carrying in our life. In Christ, we know that God is with us. God is together with us in our daily struggling. God is there giving us strength, giving us healing, and giving us hope in our life. That's we should keep saying while the world challenge us why the Christian, why you and I have hope. Although in this kind of reality, in this harsh reality, we need to struggle, but yet we struggle with hope. And as also Christ said in Matthew verses 11, Matthew chapter 11 verses 29 until 30, he said like this, that in this reality, because we know the steadfast love of God, nevertheless, we must take our yoke. We must take our yoke, which is from Christ, and it is now the yoke that we carry now is easy. It is light. Therefore, to give account to our hope is to show that we also carry a yoke in this reality. But the kind of yoke we carry is a light one, because in Christ, in the steadfast love of God, we are given strength, therefore we can carry the yoke of the life, but it is a light one. Dear friends, the, the letter of Peter move on and he say after we can give account to the world why we are faithful, why we are having hope, why we are having this truth. But then, the letter of Peter also continue by saying, therefore, your action, your deed, should also reflect what Christ wants you. There is something that we should also do, that we also show to the world. There is, as being a Christian, our conduct, our action, is a reflection of Christ. And uh, what will it be look like? What uh, will it be? Indeed, it's somehow emulate or is somehow a Christ-like living in this kind of world. If we see uh, Roman 12, Roman 12, verses 3, uh, Paul said to the com community, he said like this, after we transform our mind after we follow the mind of Christ, he said, then we should live according to the measure of faith. So dear friend, the way we live out our faith, the way we 
express our Christ like is by showing that we can measure our faith. It's quite uh, it's quite uh, uneasy to understand why there is a measure of faith and why our life should be according to the measure of, of faith that given to us. As we sometimes listen to the gospel of Christ, he mentioned that our faith is like a mustard seed. It's like a sheet. You put, you plant it, it grows, and while it grows, you will see its fruit. But those faith, which is like sheet, is your faith, is my faith, is our faith, and because it's our faith, then it is us who responsible to grow it. It's our responsible to nurture our faith, and then we will see what kind of fruit that our faith will bring out in this life. Therefore, dear friend, as a faithful Christian, as a Christian who are faithfully living in, this reali in, the, in the reality of this life, then let us carry our faith like a master sheet, but then put it, plant it, and make it real by its fruit, and it's you and I who responsible to show to the world the kind of fruit that we have as we faithfully living as Christian. One of the fruit, if we continue reading Romans or if we read uh, the letter of Peter uh, chapter 4, in the letter of Peter chapter 4 he say that we should not follow the idolatry, that we should avoid living like those who does not believe in God. But in Rome, Paul say our fruit that we can measure should be like a gift of the Spirit. What does uh, Paul mean by it? He meant that if your fruit is a fruit of prophecy if you receive your fruit called prophecy then you should give vision you should give understanding to people to have vision in their life if your fruit is a ministry then you should guide other people so that they may have a good life guide them help them because your fruit is a prophecy, is a ministry. If your fruit is a giver, then show your generosity to others. So they may live with fullness. If your fruit is a leader, lead them. Show them how to live in this life. Is if your fruit as caregiver make other people cheerful. That's how we express our fruitful Christian living. That's how we share that we are in this life. Though there is hardship, although there is suffering, but we still can express the fruit of our faith. The sheet we carry now become fruitful. An example of it, if the fruit is like a ministry, guide others. If the fruit that you have, if the fruit that you are given from Christ is like a caregiver, then make other people cheerful. Dear friend, those word from Peter is what we are really need to reflect nowadays. As he mentioned, as I mentioned before, 
we are challenged that we should give account on the hope. We are we should share the truth that we have because of Christ. And indeed, the truth is on the beloved God who give us his steadfast love to us. Even those God who is with us in the day, in the life of our struggle. But secondly, what God also want us, what this letter of Peter also want us, that we grow the seed of faith that we have. Not only growing it, that we are also asked to show the fruit, to measure the fruit. And the measure of fruit, you can emulate what Peter said and what Paul also said in Rome. If you want to be measured as a ministry, guide others. Guide those friends of you in this life, in your office. If the fruit that God gives you is as giver, be generous. Help others. And if the fruit of your faith that you are now asked to be a leader, Lead them, show them how to deal with this life, how to carry on hope and witnessing that hope can sustain in the many challenges of this life. In Christ's name, Amen. I hope God spoke to you personally through this message today and that it will guide you in your daily life. Brothers and sisters, we have reached the end of our service. We thank you again for joining us and hope to see you soon. Let us end this service by singing the song, Because We Bear Your Name, led by Karin. Happy Sunday. Have a great week ahead. Stay safe and healthy, everyone.